What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeMo.com, and today I'm giving you a very special, sleepy edition of the FanDuel Single Game Breakdown for the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to these sim results as we get closer to lock. Special announcement, I will be live before our Live Before Lock show with Adam Scher, where we're giving about 30 minutes along with my sim update. So you'll want to watch that show as well, but I'll be tweeting them out to follow me at Josh Engelman. And finally, let me know in the comments section, who do you like at MVP and at Flex for tonight's slate? The high level stuff. This one's a crazy showdown slate. 124.8. That is the average fantasy points in the optimal lineup. 59,500 is the median salary use. You want to spend it all because there's a lot of guys that are good on both of these teams. 2.4 Arizona Cardinals, 2.6 Seattle Seahawks. That's the makeup of the average optimal lineup. Seahawks, three point favorites at home with a monster 56.5 game total. There should be a ton of offense. I'm excited. Here are my favorite MVPs. Now, if I say anything too egregious, apologies in advance. I was up way too late watching the NBA draft last night. It's an early morning. My top two MVP options are Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray. And if you're asking me to pick between the two, I'm going to Wilson. Wilson shows up as the optimal MVP 28.8% of the time. Murray, 26.4%. I expect Murray to pick up a little bit of additional ownership as well. So that makes it even easier for me. I really like Russell Wilson here as my top likelihood MVP. If you're not looking to go to one of the quarterbacks, three options at wide receiver probably seem pretty obvious. DeAndre Hopkins, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Hopkins and Metcalf both 13.5. Lockett $500 cheaper. I expect Lockett to play. I think these guys are going to end up going a little under-owned, and certainly one of them will in a pretty dramatic way. If I'm ranking all three of them, Hopkins is my lead guy. Almost 15% of the time he shows up in the optimal. Lockett, two. Metcalf, three. But those guys are really, really close. You'll want to pay close attention to the ownership between them. But it's Hopkins, Lockett, then Metcalf, but you're probably flipping a coin on the second two. And then that's it. I don't really have much interest in going to any captain outside of the five guys that I mentioned. Murray, Wilson, Hopkins, Metcalf, Lockett. Just because of the way this game is set up, those are my MVP options. I don't see any down the line guys that I want to go to right now. Now at the flex spot, you can get super weird, especially because a lot of lineups are going to have Murray and Wilson in the MVP spot, and that's expensive. You're going to have to save some salary. I do like Murray and Wilson clearly at the flex spot. I think they're going to go over-owned, however. I will likely be lighter on both quarterbacks than the general public will be. I would rather be a lot heavier on Hopkins, Metcalf, and Lockett. I think those three guys are going to go underrepresented today. And definitely, as I mentioned for the MVP section, one of them will pretty aggressively. Hopkins, Lockett, Metcalf is my preferred order. We already know that. All three of those guys show up in like the 33% range. So one out of every three lineups is going to have Hopkins, Metcalf, or Lockett. You can even double that up pretty easily. As we work our way down a little bit further, 8,500 for Jason Myers feels like a pretty nice price. I know he'll come in uh, under owned compared to my sim results. Happy to go that direction. There's a lot of points to be had. If some of these drives don't turn into touchdowns, there are a lot of opportunities for Jason Myers to just pick up field goals. If you want to go further down, Zane Gonzalez, probably a step behind Jason Myers. But the guy that I really have my eye on at 8K is Carlos Hyde. Shows up in the optimal 37.6% of the time. Projected ownership as of right now, significantly lower than that. I'm assuming Chris Carson does not play. If Chris Carson ends up in, you'll get updated sim results later tonight on my Twitter and on our live show. After that, Larry Fitzgerald at 7,500 is fine. Uh, my floor is probably Greg Olson, 6,500. Shows up in the optimal 10% of the time. If you're going to play a 20 max, you can get there. If you're playing a 3 max, it's not my favorite play in the world, but that is the floor of spending down. I don't want to go any lower than Greg Olson. But if we're talking just favorites at the flex, Carlos Hyde, DeAndre Hopkins, Jason Myers, Tyler Lockett. 
Now, when it comes to fades, I don't really have one at the MVP spot. I think Kyler might be a hair over-owned, but his likelihood of success kind of negates that problem. I think Murray and Wilson should be the most owned guys, and I think the three wide receivers are going to be, at the minimum, properly owned. So I don't really have anything that I can point out from the MVP spot. At the flex spot, however, I do think that Murray and Wilson will be over-owned at this particular location. I'd rather have the bonus of one of those two guys at the MVP than to spend 17K or 16.5 and not get that inflation on their fantasy points. I don't like it. So they're two owned. I will likely be lighter on Murray and Wilson at the flex spot. Further down the list, there's not too much that stands out. Like, I don't want to go to DJ Dallas, whether Carson is healthy or not. David Moore probably ends up a little bit over-owned. I think Andy Isabella owns up, ends up a little bit over-owned. But for right now, nobody really stands out. I guess 11K for Kenyon Drake, probably $1,000 more than I would like to spend today. If Alex Collins goes fully under-owned, I'd be more likely to go there at 10K. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. That is my FanDuel single game breakdown for tonight's Thursday night football game between the Cardinals and the Seahawks. One last time, please, please, please hit that like button. It helps me out so much. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman so you can get these updates and tune in 6.40 p.m. Eastern time, myself, and Adam Share going to be breaking down this slate for about a half hour before we turn it over to the Live Before Lock crew. If you're playing on DraftKings tonight, find the link for the DraftKings video here. Check that one out. And uh, good luck. I'll be back tomorrow morning for my NFL Top Fives.